Living Church family, Pastor Brett here, and to visitors, welcome to our devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. Most of us have uh, faced in our life situations where in our hearts we believe that things may not get better. Sometimes we even give in to despair that things might not ever change. Some may worry about a family member. Will they ever come back to the Lord? Some might worry about their finances. Will I ever get out of this hole? Will I ever be able to own my own home? Some worry about their health. Will God ever heal me? This is the condition where the very thing we crave for, the thing we pray for, the thing we seek, just seems impossible at the moment. I know that many of us have been there. Some of you may even be there now. Of course, we know there's a lot of promises in the Bible. We are aware of that. Promises where God guarantees our well-being, where he guarantees to bless us. And we know that is true and we believe in it. But sometimes God's deliverance and his answers to prayer seem, well, just so far away. One example of this story is the Israelites in exile. For 70 years, they lived in a foreign land. Now, their faith was intact, but they couldn't worship the way they wanted to worship because they had they'd been taken away from Jerusalem and the temple had been destroyed. Now, God had promised that he would restore them to their former place, but it had been so long, and many had even died while in exile. Then when they were at their deepest point of discouragement, God sent a special messenger. You see, what had happened was, at this stage, some of them had returned. And there was an initial burst of enthusiasm that God might somehow be doing something. The foundation of the temple was built, but then it all stalled. And things began to become hopeless again. What they hoped for didn't even happen. It's as if God was not even there. The exile was discouraging enough, but not as discouraging as coming back in hope only to have the building work stall. So God sent Zechariah to him. And in chapter 8, God says these words to the exiles. Then another message came to me from the Lord of Heaven's army. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. My love for Mount Zion is passionate and strong. I am consumed with passion for Jerusalem. And now the Lord says, I am returning to Mount Zion and I will live in Jerusalem. Then Jerusalem would be called the faithful city. The mountain of the Lord of Heaven's armies will be called the Holy Mountain. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Once again, old men and women will walk Jerusalem's streets with their canes and will sit together in the city squares. And the streets of the city will be filled with boys and girls at play. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. All this may seem impossible to you now. A small remnant of God's people. But is it impossible for me? Says the Lord of Heaven's army. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. You can be sure that I will rescue my people from the east and from the west. And I will bring them home again to live safely in Jerusalem. They will be my people. And I will be faithful and just toward them as their God. It may seem impossible to you now when you're in this predicament, but is it impossible for me, says God. There are times when we can't see past the worry and the trauma and the grief. How could it possibly be better? But what seems impossible to us is just an opportunity for God to show his glory in a situation. 
God goes on to speak through Zechariah to the Israelite people. He gives them a really wonderful and glorious picture of the future. And it brought them renewed hope. When things are at the bottom of the pit, when you're at the end of your rope, when there's nothing left, there's two things you need. One, you need to listen to God, hear his voice. And the second, you need a vision of the future. And God gave them both of these things. Make sure you listen to what God is saying. Read the Bible a lot. Let his spirit speak to you. Hear his words and know that he still cares. And if you find that really hard to hear God's voice, then just at least believe the stories that you read about how God has blessed and intervened. And pray and ask God for a vision for the future, a picture of what he has for you. Ask him to give you something that you can hold on to, a promise or an image of some kind with a God-given picture of the future. It renews our strength. We can have a new incentive to keep working and keep striving. When he does comfort you with these promises, hold on to them and trust him. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you are a speaking God that you seek to always communicate your will to those who love you. We pray, Lord, with open ears and open hearts that you would speak into our life too, giving us a picture of the future, enough for us to be motivated and continue to trust. We understand, Lord, that you don't always spare us from downtime. You don't always spare us from tragedy. But I know that you have great plans for us into the future. Help us to hang on to these. Well, keep walking with God and keep talking with him. Be prepared to listen to him as he speaks to you through the Bible. And if he does speak, trust and obey. Keep looking for opportunities to bless others. And we'll see you soon.